stole rats. Well, fresh back from the high Sierra fly-in. It's actually been about a month or so. And my experience up there this year was uh, great, but I'm starting to think that maybe some performance upgrades are necessary in addition to the ones I did last year on the Kit Fox. So my main complaint was power this year. Uh, new prop, um, the Lyco Memo 290 put down 125 horse to 130 horse, somewhere in there. At sea level, it works fantastic. I love the plane, but uh, I was outgunned by at least 80 horsepower or more um, in the races during the drag. Stole, and I'm not gonna build a plane just for that race, obviously, but that race really puts everything into perspective as far as your performance of the plane goes for um, takeoff performance at those altitudes. Um, I want more, you know. I can land shorter than I can take off when I'm above 5,000 feet. So I think the best way to fix that is more power. So my problem I'm having is I love my airplane, man. It's just, it's dialed. It's taken me, well, 12 years to get it to where it's at. And I'm real happy with it. Um, but I think that you can squeeze more power out of a Kit Fox. Or not more power, but put a power plant in a Kit Fox and get more performance out of it. I mean, obviously Trent's shown with his new engine that it's quite the performer. Um, Edge Performance is running some pretty sick motors, putting out 150 or more horsepower. Uh, so we've seen them on uh, the S7 that was at uh, High Sierra. Um, and Jason had his S6 there with that same motor. And those suckers really perform. With a turbo, they're not getting the drop off in performance at altitude like I am. I mean, at sea level, 125, 130 horse is great, and I think it's 2% per 1,000 feet. So I'm lacking. I'm heavy when I get up there. And if you're running 100 horsepower with a Lyco, like an 235 versus the Rotax, it's not great because you run the same horsepower, but you have more weight. The advantage of the 0290 is you have more horsepower for that weight. But as you go up in altitude and that horsepower drops off on a non-turboed engine, if you're comparing to a straight 912 ULS, then yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to perform pretty similar. But when you start putting a turbo on these things and those guys are running the same horsepower at elevation that I can run or they can run at, at sea level, then you start thinking uh, there may be better solutions out there. My, again, my problem is I don't really want to change what I have because it's a great airplane. So this is the question I'm asking you guys. Do I change what I have or do I start over? Keep that one flying while I build something else. But right behind me, you can see where I'm going. Picked this puppy up yesterday and uh, there's some good things happening with this setup. For those of you who don't know, this is a Yamaha Apex snowmobile. Uh, this one here is a 2006. It's basically a thousand cc's uh, fuel injected. It's not turboed. However, that solution is is uh, under development and with some real promising results. So as this thing sits, the way it puts out the power in the sled, you're looking at about 160 horsepower. Now there's some de <clears throat> debate whether or not you're going to get that in an aircraft because we're going to be running at a slightly lower RPMs than you would run in the snowmobile. So but you can definitely count on about 140 horsepower. Steve Henry's running this motor on a, in his current Highlander uh, with Teal Jenkins Skytrax um, gearbox on it. That's what I plan on using is, the, uh, is Teal's gearbox. And Edge Performance is now developing their, uh, their version of this engine. So they've torn it down. They're gonna be doing some amazing things with new pistons, um, a turbo setup on it that's aviation specific. There are aftermarket turbos that you can put on this um, that do have some problems when you start looking at applying them to an aviation um, specific application. So really excited to see what happens with edge performance, um, you know, cost prohibiting things, hopefully not. You know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing maybe 200, Realistically, a very even 200 horsepower out of this motor, um, pushing it, maybe 250. 
Doesn't take much boost to get it to 250. It really doesn't. So then you're looking at uh, longevity of the motor or reliability. So some great things happening with this setup. Uh, I think I definitely want to get into what's going on with this setup. So that being said, I went out and purchased one. Cool little sled, man. I mean, for what you get for the money, uh, it's almost a shame to tear this thing apart because it's a hell of a machine. I'll probably ride it a little bit in the snow just to, uh, to check out, see how that motor runs, get familiar with the motor. But I bought this to put it in an airplane. So, you know, I've talked to uh, John McBean, Kit Fox. We're looking at uh, about, now that's delayed, probably about a year out on a delivery of a new kit. Um, you know, I'd like to get going earlier than that. So I've looked at some other options. But realistically, if I pulled this motor out and got all the components together and really focused on the, the firewall forward portion and having my plane to take measurements off or whatever I need to do, I could probably, realistically, that's not a bad option, is get this all ready. And when the kit came, you know, in, in next November, um, the firewall forward portion would be figured out. Then it'd be building the airplane, we're looking then probably, you know, 2020 or I could strap this puppy on my plane this winter and be flying it at high Sierra but there's a point of diminishing returns when you have a plane that you have invested money into the firewall forward into the plane if you take that off and put a new one on there at what point are you exceeding the value of the airplane that will probably happen if I did this so in other words, I'd have more money into the airplane than I could sell it for. Don't plan on selling it unless I built something else. But I always keep that in mind. I don't want to be super upside down in any of my toys, that's for sure. So <clears throat> that's something I'm considering. There's other airframes. You know, I am a huge fan of Kit Fox, but there are other airframes that have sooner deliveries. Uh, I'm not sure what the delivery time is on the new RANS, the S20 and the S21. The S20 with a 141 wing. Pretty interesting setup there. I think that would be a real performer, whether it's very, uh, you know, if it's really good for short, short stuff, that's to be determined. I don't know what its, its slow flight characteristics are. Not a huge fan of the gear that comes stock on it, but I think that could definitely be reworked, especially working with DK1 Racing. And uh, Tony could work out something where we could put a, a good setup as far as the, the gear goes on that. Still feel like the wing might be a little short on that for a real stall application, but they've got good st stall numbers on that. So that's one I've looked at. Um, the other option, talked to Steve Henry quite a bit. I mean, he's basically proven that this setup in a Highlander is, it's the most ready to go um, Yamaha application out there. He has the entire firewall forward figured out already. So I could take this motor out, order a kit from him, all the stuff he's got already figured out, and he could be flying pretty quick with a badass airplane. So that's an option. Um, and there's another option I'm looking at that I'm gonna keep under my hat because uh, it'd be pretty exciting. So there's a different airframe out there that uh, they would probably be the only one with this motor in it. So I'm gonna, look at all the different options and um, really see what the availability is because I want to get building. Um, I don't know if you guys know the backstory of my plane and I'll do a video of a full walk around description of that plane at some point people have asked for that. But I bought mine about 70% 70, 70 or so complete. I took it backwards a little bit from that, redid some of the stuff that had already been done. But I didn't start it from the beginning and I really enjoyed finishing up the plane going through the certification process, and then all the modifications I've done over the tw last 12 years, I've made it definitely my plane. Um, but I didn't start from, from the beginning on it. So I'm itching to do another build. I love building. The building part of it for me is, is it, it's not as good as the flying, because flying's awesome. But it is definitely something when I'm not flying that I really enjoy doing. Um, I've got the garage for it. You know, this is what I'm working with. I got this big three car garage set up with the shop uh, space back over here. And uh, so I, 
I'm, I'm looking to get going on something. So give me some feedback. Tell me what you guys think. Should I tear mine apart and, and put a badass motor in it? Should I leave it alone, start over with something new, and then once that one's done and I'm convinced it's the way to go, sell this one that's been my baby for 12 years? I can't even imagine trying to you know, think about selling it. But uh, I know there's people out there that probably are looking for Kit Fox, so they're gonna encourage that. But it'd be a ways down the road. If I'd had to start over, it would be looking not next high Sierra fly in, but the one after that. And uh, that's fine. You know, I, I enjoy the process, so that would be fine. But for the most part, I've got the motor. It's gonna go on something that has wings on it. So help me make that decision. Thanks.